Good morning. It is a pleasure to be with you guys this morning to bring the word of the Lord. Um, I jumped at this opportunity when Regina called because um, I not only appreciate the opportunities to, to preach the word of the Lord, but this one is extra special because Regina and I are friends. We've known each other through Gardner Webb, our time at the School of Divinity there. Both of our husbands are Wolfpack fans. We're diehard Wolfpack fans. And um, and then we're also partners in other forms of ministry opportunities. So it's a pleasure to be here with you guys today. Um, today's message is going to be centered around the steps of faith, both large and small. And as we explore the depths of faith, um, we will be traveling through the Old Testament and the New Testament to find its origin, its intention uh, for us Christians, both then and now. Um, join with me as we read today's scripture. Today's scripture, New Testament reading is Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. Hear now the word of the Lord. It is not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For it is those who depend on the law as heirs, Faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgressions. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be granted to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who believes life to the dead, to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Again, all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but for us also to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believed in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Precious God, thank you for this glorious day to celebrate and to worship you. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that you present to us. I pray for the Holy Spirit to reconcile our hearts and minds to your word that is spoken today. Strip away any thoughts or distractions that might diminish our attention to your message. Lord, guide my words and thoughts as they are conveyed so that they may be a true reflection of you. For we give you all the honor and the glory, asking these and all things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the church says, Amen. Faith. What constitutes having faith? Faith is trust. We completely trust in someone or something. For religious purposes, faith is based on a strong belief in God. A strong belief in God or in doctrine, religion, in the doctrines of religion based on our spiritual understanding of things that we know but we may not be able to physically see. 
We trust in our hearts and we trust in our souls all that we know of God. We can see and we can know all the things that he has created. We trust in our hearts and in our souls that Jesus, God's son, died on the cross for our sins. We know that he was resurrected on the third day so that all who believe in him could have eternal life. We have faith in God. We trust God with our whole selves. Abraham trusted God. He stepped out in faith to follow God's will for himself, but most importantly, to fulfill God's ultimate plan. The Old Testament text read so eloquently this morning describes Abraham's trust and faith in God. At 75 years of age, Abraham hears God's calling and he responds in faith to it. Picking up all that he owns, along with his family and his faith, he walks down that literal path that God is calling him, pointing out to him. Each part of the journey, Abraham is in constant conversation with God. In verse 9 of our Old Testament reading this morning of Genesis 12, it says, And Abraham journeyed on by stages toward Negeb. Imagine being asked at age 75 to pick up all of the things of your life and to start traveling on foot to a foreign land that is foreign to you and is foreign to yours. Abraham did it. Abraham was the father of many nations. Abraham was the father of faith. In today's text, Paul is bringing into remembrance for us, for the people of that time as well, Abraham's faith and its relationship to the law and the growth of God's kingdom. In Romans chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, Paul is saying, It is not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but it was through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Within these few verses, Paul is reminding the church of the covenant that God made with Abraham before the law became into being. Abraham was not following God's calling out of obedience to the law. Rather, Abraham was following God's call out of obedience to him, out of faith to him. Paul reminds the congregation then and now that God's covenant with Abraham is to bless his people, all of his people, you and me, the people to come. That was birthed out of Abraham's trust. It was birthed out of Abraham's faith in God, his righteousness. The acts of works and circumcision and the law, they came after Abraham's act of faith. They were not the means by which God formed a covenant with Abraham. It was Abraham's faith that initiated that. The law came afterwards. Paul elaborates on the fact that it was Abraham's faith in God which ruled his actions, which ruled his life, not following the laws that were set forth. Rather, it was not the law that makes us heirs to the kingdom. It is one faith in God that grows the family of God. Paul reminds us that the law restricts and inhibits spiritual growth, both individually and collectively. If we're following the law, then where is our faith in God? One's mindset can be quickly altered if we believe that we are to be free of transgressions, free of sins, because we are following the law to a T and we're checking off all the boxes. When in reality, we are really missing the message of Christ's life, his death. We're missing it entirely because we are checking all of our boxes We're not becoming vulnerable. We're not allowing ourselves to feel what others are feeling around us, to live into our faith. 
We are not allowing ourselves to grow. If we continue to follow all of the boxes, checking off and crossing all of our T's and dotting all of our I's, we are going to live spiritually um, unhealthy lives. We're not going to be formed in the way that we need to be formed. And instead, we are going to be underdeveloped milk babies. We see the sublimation through Jesus' ministry with the Pharisee and the Sadducee, working so diligently to maintain those Jewish laws, all while Jesus is faithfully carrying out his Father's work. He's living into the trust of his Father, into the faith that his Father is wanting him to demonstrate to the others. Their faith in God is non-existent because of their all-consuming adherence to the law. They are heirs without faith. If we follow a supplementary text to the scriptures this morning, looking at Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, as well as uh, verses 18 through 26, this gives us a prime example of individual acts of faith over that of following the law at the time. Within these two excerpts, we find Jesus befriending and assisting and healing those who were considered outcast a leader of a synagogue seeking out Jesus to heal his dead daughter, and a woman who has bled for 12 years, coming out into society to find healing by simply touching the hem of Jesus' garment. Jesus is trusting God, and he is living into his calling and earthly ministry, rebelling against the law to touch and to heal and to meet others' needs that may not be those that belong necessarily in the community. The synagogue leader and the woman both choose to forgo the obedience of the law, and they act and they rest in their faith of God, in their faith of Jesus. The law does not provide hope to them, but rather their faith, their trust in Christ does. The bleeding woman and the synagogue leader trust in Christ. They believe in him and their faith brought about not only healing for themselves or for their loved one, but it also deepened their spiritual relationship with Christ. They they saw it firsthand. They were vulnerable and they sought help from him and they lived in their faith and they were, their needs were met. They received the peace that passes all understanding, the comfort that our Christ gives to us. Their family of God is growing wider and deeper to include not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles alike. Just as God promised Abraham it would, remember the father of the many nations? As we continue on looking at Romans 4, chapter, or verses 16 through 17, we see that it speaks of God's promises, his covenant being available to all, those who live by the law as well as those who live by faith. Paul also uses a word in this particular text, the word of grace, to describe how God's promise may be gifted and guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. Verse 17 reads, As it it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being the things that were not. Paul reminds us that it is through the grace of that our sins have been paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross. This understanding of grace is for all, Jews and Gentiles alike, paid by Jesus, enabling us to be a part of this divine promise, of this divine family that God speaks to Abraham about. We express and we practice our faith in God who gives life to the dead, and calls into being the things that were not. This is our faith. This is our trust that we hold in Christ, our Lord and Savior. 
Paul longs for the church to grasp that being a Christian requires one to be far more than just the rule follower or the box checker offer. He intends for us to do more. He intends for us to live into our faith. If we check the box of, I attended church today, I prayed today, or I prayed all week, I tithed this morning, I didn't work on the Sabbath. We are keeping the law, right? We're checking, we're doing. But are we also paying attention to the ways in which we might be sinning? Are we growing into our faith, recognizing those ways that we are failing? not just paying attention to the things that we're doing right? Are we depending upon God to help us with the things that are troubling us at our very core? That is what he wants us to do. That is what having faith is all about. And other people watching us doing this, that is how their faith grows too. That is how those questions stem and conversations begin that we can start to explain to others about our God and about how our faith rests in him and all the many beautiful ways in which he has walked with us through challenging times of life. He has bestowed upon us blessings. Our faith is growing and theirs begins to do the same. We are called to be vulnerable, to trust even in the most challenging times of life, to break the rules when it means that we can show the love of God to someone who is struggling with life and may be afraid to walk through the doors of the church. We are welcoming them, inviting them in, and showing them that we are no different than who they are. Faith, trust, and hope, that is what we are. That is what Abraham possessed. That is what Christ longs for us to possess as well. Paul emphasizes the concepts of hope and trust of God found in one's faith as we continue on in verses 18 through 22. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was dead also. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. And this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham was and still is a prime example for us of faith. At age 75, God moved Abraham and his family, and then at 100, granted a son to him and his wife. Abraham trusted God's faithfulness to his people, and he never wavered in conviction that what God promised would be accomplished. The trust that Abraham displayed allowed God to shine, showing that the God who gives his promises is also the powerful God that is going to fulfill those promises in his own time and in his own wonderful and miraculous way. Abraham did not know how God was going to execute his plan, just as we don't know how those plans are going to be executed for us. However, We trust and we believe, just as Abraham did, recognizing the grace that comes from God. God's call to Abraham was full of grace, just as the offer of salvation is to us. It is full of God's grace. Our faith grows stronger and it grows deeper as we see God working in our lives. Our trust in God becomes transformed it becomes renewed just as Abraham's did. As, he, as we watch, just as Abraham watched, God at work. Each situation in our own lives, the testimonies that we hear of others around us, all of those are God's hand at work. Those 
instances, those moments, they enhance our faith. They enhance and strengthen our trust in our Lord. I'm sure if we were to sit for just a moment, we could all think of the ways in which our times in faith have been tested. But just as quickly as those moments may come into our brain, we can also remember the ways in which God provided. He provided us comfort. He met us where we were in our time of need. And we can think about all the ways in which our faith became stronger. Our relationship with our God grew a little bit deeper. And those conversations with others became a little bit easier because we had the, the, the swelling within our hearts to be able to say and to be able to share, here is what my God has done for me. How can I help you walk through what you're walking through so that you can see your God working for you as well? That is deepening in our faith. That is deepening in our trust of God. Christian life is characterized by faith in God, by loyalty to God's creation, by renewing, by healing, sanctifying of the Spirit of God. We are called to share all of that, to share our faith, and not just live by the law. Paul neatly ties it all together for the church and also for us in Romans 4, verses 23 through 25. The words, it is created, it is credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believed in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. God ultimately fulfilled the covenant promise to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. It is through Christ's death and resurrection that all may come to know the word of God, that all may come to know God, and it is through their faith in God that they too, that we too, will be called righteous. It is our faith, our trust in the unseen, that our hearts and our souls are drawn to when we come to learn about Christ. Yes, there are rules, there are laws that we all must follow to live a just life. But we are also called to do far more than that. We are called to do far more than to simply check the boxes. We are called to live out our faith and our trust in Christ. Faith is a sign of life, and life is a gift from God. When we act in faith and we rest in our faith, we are displaying to others the greatest of testimonies that we can possibly give. Faith is the evidence of redemption. It is the evidence of renewal in our lives. It is the evidence of a human life coming back on track of one being turned away from idolatry to the true worship of God, from corruption to fruitfulness. That is what faith is all about. Individuals who are struggling with life's challenges can be greatly changed by what may seem like the most simplest of acts for you and for me. This could be opening a door to a conversation that may change their lives forever in the most positive and beautifully wonderful way. A simple act of faith on our part may elevate our spiritual outlook, and it may just increase the depths of our understanding of God. It may cause us to have a deeper self-reflection. It offers also fosters change within us, within our relationships with one another, the conversations that we hold, and the thoughts that we have with others and the thoughts we have with God. One, uh, for true faith, one has to look deeply. We have to become vulnerable. Truth faith causes us to reflect and to feed on the true nature of God, thus leading to the rehabilitation of us as the true image bearers of God. 
toward our fellow humanity. So my friends, I ask you today, how will you respond? Will you choose to step out? Will you choose to be vulnerable and uncomfortable in those situations that cause us to sit still, to meditate, to listen to God, to rest in our faith, to test our faith, to trust our faith? Do you prefer to grow in your faith by trusting instead of remaining in that comfortable situation? I ask you to search your hearts and minds to figure out where you might be this morning. We need to live into our faith to trust our Lord with all of our hearts and our minds. Please pray with me. God of goodness and of grace, thank you for the reminders and the challenges. Our minds are flooded with memories and stories of the times in which we stepped down on faith, and those times in which you responded with care and love and comfort. We forget these times, Lord, and we get into a pattern in which we are just kind of going through the motions. We become stagnant, and we fail to seek rest. We fail to seek a respite time in our faith and in our trust in you. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us of this. I pray that the Holy Spirit will prick our hearts and cause us to recall in our mind the ways in which you have been faithful to your children, causing us to abide in faith and to trust in you with everything that we are, Lord. I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. <laughs>